Good morning. It's uh, such an honor to be here today and have this opportunity to share with you my idea. When I looked at the program today, I noticed that the title of my presentation was the longest and the most complicated one. Even the presenter had some difficulty. <laughs> but in fact, my idea is very simple. It's about the application of an existing technology to a different use, to monitor the cleanup of contaminated soils. Soil contamination is a major environmental issue worldwide as a result of mining, industrial, and urban activities over the last 200 years. In North America and Europe, the extent of contaminated land is well known, with many countries having a legal framework to identify and deal with this environmental problem. Unfortunately, that's not the case of Portugal, but we are working on it. So, in the United States, there are more than 1,000 Superfound sites, as you can see in this map. Superfound sites are huge locations that require a long-term response to clean up the contamination and usually involve millions of dollars in each site. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, in the next 30 years, if current regulations and practices remain the same, there are more than 350,000 sites that will require cleanup. The bill for this cleanup may amount to as much as $250 billion. Oops. Okay. In Europe, an estimate points to 3 million potentially contaminated sites. And we know there are 250,000 that will need, um, that will need uh, cleanup and remediation. Due to the rapid industrialization and the economic growth, soil contamination is also a pressing issue in countries like China and India. A recent study on the exposure to contaminants in countries like India, Indonesia, and the Philippines showed that the burden of disease due to exposure of contamination is equally or more harmful to human health than an infectious disease like malaria. So we also have air and water pollution. Why should we care about soil? Why does this matter? Soil is a non-renewable resource at the human scale. And soil plays many important roles in the support of life on Earth. Soil is the habitat for billions of organisms and contributes to biodiversity. Soil is a water filter, is a growth media. Soil is the foundation of our houses, our buildings, our homes, all our infrastructures. And most of all, soil, soil is the basis of our agroecosystems. It provides us food, feed, fiber, and fuel. So since the late, the late 90s with the nanotechnology boom, zero-valent iron nanoparticles are considered very promising for the cleanup of contaminated soils. Zero-valent iron was, has been used for the last 30 years as a remedial solution in, in reactive barriers, but the small size of the nanoparticles, the possibility of transport, their mobility, and their high reactivity allows us to open a new range of possibilities and clean up a lot of more sites with lower costs. So iron nanoparticles are highly reactive and have been successfully tested with a wide range of, of contaminants, mostly coordinated um, compounds, organic compounds, like all the uh, organochlorides family from coordinated solvents and pesticides, but also heavy metals that are a high source of contaminations, dyes, uh, PCBs, you name it. You have a whole range of contaminants that we can reach with this technology. And with this technology and the tools that we have today, the injection of nanoparticles is conceptually possible at any location and depth. So in the last 10 years, we have seen more than 50 field and full-scale demonstrations 
of the um, iron nanoparticles in soil and groundwater remediation. Most of this pioneer field work was done in the United States, but interest in, in Europe is uh, rising up. The European Union adopted a precautionary approach. We should study more this technology. This, there is a considerable debate about the impact of nanomaterials and the environmental impact of nanomaterials, so we should study more this um, technology before releasing the nanoparticles in the environment. In fact, in fact, we currently don't have a method that allows us to analyze the nanoparticles in soil. The usual methods are based in the lateral microscopy, are very expensive, are time consuming, and require considerable expertise. So we need an inexpensive and portable tool that allows us to measure the nanoparticles in soil. So let's summarize. We have a problem, soil contamination. We have a potentially viable solution, iron nanoparticles. But we need a method that allows us to detect and quantify iron nanoparticles in soil. So what is my solution? What is my idea? I want to test if we can use, I want to study if we can use hyperspectral imaging to measure iron nanoparticles in soil. Hyperspectral imaging has been used for decades in satellite imaging. Satellites allow us to, to determine chemical, morphological, and mineralogical information about the Earth's surface. So the human eye only sees visible light in three bands, red, green, and blue. Hyperspectral imaging allows us to process, to collect and process information across the whole spectra, up to 200 bands. So we pass from three bands from the human eye to 200 bands. And iron and iron oxides have unique fingerprints. They're called um, spectral signatures. And, the, and we can allow, and that will allow us to identify those materials in a scan object. Hyperspectral imaging has also been used successful in medical applications and food quality. So what I'm suggesting is just to adjust the scale of the application. Instead of using hyperspectral imaging in satellites, adjust the scale to, adjust the scale to, as, um, to a small device that we can take out to the field and we can take to the field and analyze iron nanoparticles directly in a soil sample, like this one that was in the slide before. <laughs> so what we want is to have a tool that allows us to assess if the iron nanoparticles are indeed a sustainable remediation method, if they are the solution for our soil contamination problem, because sustainability is the way we want to add to. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.